in the lives of people that can distract from that and there's uh, as much as there's joy uh, there is sadness as well amen and that's life and that's how it is yeah a lot of people are dealing with some serious issues some constant problems persistent pains and just general trouble we're living in an uncertain time chaos is just the order of the day there is so much uncertainty uh, that we are facing amen and the truth is we probably thought it would get better but if you would be honest it hasn't gotten any better amen yeah but in the midst of it all we have a God that is with us Emmanuel in the midst of it all we have a God that is for us amen so in the midst of it all, it's going to be all right, however it is. Why? Because God is present with us, and God is always for us. A popular passage, a familiar passage for us during this season is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse number 6 and it reads for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace Amen. We're going to talk about the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Ushers, you may be seated. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We ask that you would be glorified and that your people would be encouraged. Open our understanding, our hearing, and our ability to listen is our prayer. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be accepted in your sight. Touch me, O God, me that the preaching will come as you desire and it will accomplish the task that you set it out to accomplish. That I don't get in the way of what you're trying to do. That I don't stand in the way of what you're trying to say. Of course, in Christ's name we do ask it. Amen. The Prince of Peace. That, I just love that verse. Just listen to it. I want you to close your eyes. Just close your eyes and listen to this. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Don't that verse just make you feel better? I mean, it should do something in us. Number one, because it is a prophecy of hope to a people that are in a hopeless situation number two it is the word of God Isaiah wrote this 700 years before Christ was born Christ came yes the child was born but the government that they were expecting him to set up hadn't been established yet but look at your neighbor and say, 
but it is. Amen. 700 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah prophesied that this they would call him because these, these would be his uh, characteristics. This would be the titles. This would be some of the positions and the places he would hold in our lives. You do remember last week when I told you that um, Ahaz was the king and he was not the best king and because of his disobedience to God that Israel, uh, Judah, had been plunged into a place of darkness and despair, fear, chaos, uncertainty. They were in a horrible pit. They were in a terrible place. They could not see the light at the end of the tunnel. They were in total darkness, separated from God. Amen. Enemies around them desiring to destroy them. No hope and no help. But God. How many know God is always ready, willing, and able? But God. Listen to me. God spoke this word through the prophet Isaiah in a time when the people really needed it. Sarah's Assyria was pressuring Judah to form an alliance. Join in with us. Ahaz was afraid of the kings or that was going to attack him. Look at what God did in the midst of all of that. Sent his promise. He sent a word. Won't God give you a word? I just need somebody to raise your hand. If you've ever found yourself in a place like this and you didn't even you was just spinning and spinning but God spoke a word to your heart anybody ever experienced that won't he do it what a mighty God he is and look at what he promised he promised the child he said unto us a child is born unto a, us a son is given God speaks to them in the darkness he sends a light to lead them out of the darkness God will send a light to lead us amen he'll lead you oh the question is will we follow because he'll lead us amen this prophecy is a message of hope and we all need hope <laughs> Even in the best of times, it's some dangerous times. We all need hope. We're never at that place where we uh, always have it made and on top of the situation. We always need hope. And God gives a message of hope in the midst of the nation's darkest hour. God will give you a message of hope, a word to help you, to lift you, to encourage you, to strengthen you, to uh, motivate you in the worst of your times and situations that's the kind of God he is God will speak when you don't hear anything else I would encourage you to have your ears open be listening listen for God to speak because he's speaking he begins with for unto us a child this they would understand the incarnation because a child has to come he is the incarnation. This child was just not a regular child. We know that. This is the Messiah. And he comes as a child. I mean, he's born into the world. We know how that works. The promise of this child that would lead them, that would provide for them, that would deliver them. Not only do we see the promise, we see the place of this child. It said, the government shall be upon his shoulders. Upon his shoulders. They were waiting on a Messiah. They were waiting on a deliverer. They were waiting on someone to govern rightly. Because they were familiar with all kind of unrighteous judges. Leaders that were corrupt unjust leaders power hungry rulers 
people that oppressed they were used to that and they wanted to be delivered from that deliver me from this oh God God said to them there's a child that's going to be born and the government shall be upon his shoulders he would be a righteous king one that will rule rightly and judge righteously this one would be not only a king but he would be the king of kings not only will he be a Lord, but he will be the Lord of Lords. Amen. That's why it's important. They wanted someone that would lead them right. They wanted somebody like David. They wanted somebody like a Moses. I mean, of course, when you have somebody like uh, Ahaz, you want somebody like David. Or somebody like Moses. But oh, God has somebody better than a David. He has somebody greater than a Moses. Someone that because David had issues and flaws. Moses had issues and flaws. But oh, there is one. That's not going to have any issues. Not going to have any flaws. Oh, he will lead you. That's why. It's important they understand we should submit to the king. Yes, we should submit to the authority of King Jesus. Amen. Won't it make a difference in your life? When you recognize him, won't he make a difference? When you acknowledge him as ruler, when you submit to him, won't he make a difference? When you submit to him, won't a transformation take place? in your life but you got to submit to the king you got to bow down before him he is the one he is the promised one God and it's so exciting because God sends this promise in perilous times God always speak at the right time not only the place of this child, but look at what he said about this child. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor. Literally means a wonder of a counselor. Counselor means an advisor. And when he's going to be a wonder of a counselor, that means he's going to be like none other. He's going to provide, Reverend Joel, wisdom, guidance, and comfort to his people. That's what he's going to do. That's what he's going to do. If we would follow his instructions, we would walk not in darkness, but in the light. Bible says, Proverbs 16 and 2, in man's eyes, all his ways are right. Yeah. Yeah. So it says, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. And we all can say, Amen. Yeah. You notice how if you say something, you can say something about somebody. What somebody's doing. And you could be doing the same thing. And not even recognize it. Isn't that so? And then what happens if somebody mentioned that to you, you get mad. And then what do you do? You bring up something about them. Don't change the fact. So you passing a hot potato, trying to pass it around. No! That's still you. But the Bible is true. There are all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes but the Lord weighs the spirits God knows that's why you should seek his wisdom in times of decision and difficulty we should seek his wisdom in times of trouble and trials rely on God's wisdom in navigating life's challenges how do I do that? He's not just going to speak to me out of the sky. 
He's going to speak to me through his word. He's going to lead me by the scripture. Amen. You want to hear God speak? Open up the Bible and read out loud. Amen. You got to rely on his wisdom, not yours, because we think we know, but truly we don't know, but he does. He knows. He is a wonderful counselor, a wonder of a counselor and advisor. He, he is filled with wisdom. His guidance is right. He will comfort us and he will keep us, cause us to feel the security that we have in him if we would just listen to what he says. See, he speaks to us, as I said earlier, this promise came when they needed it the most. They were in a dark place, in a deep trench or pit. They were in trouble and peril. They were in pain and filled with problems. But God spoke. God speaks to you. When you're in trouble, God speaks to you. When you're hurting, God speaks to you. When you're hopeless, the question is, are you listening? You know, he might not say what you want to hear. But he will say what you need to hear. Amen. Isaiah 55 and 9 says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways, says God, than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God sees all things. God knows all things we don't. So we should seek him. Seek his wisdom. <clears throat> Amen. He is the mighty God. Speaks of his power. It speaks not only of his power, but of his person. He is deity. The mighty God. All powerful is he. He's able to accomplish whatever he sets out to accomplish. He's able to do what no other can do. He's able. No one can deter him, distract from him, discourage him. If God set out to do it, it shall be done. He is the everlasting Father. Everlasting. He is before. And he is beyond time. He is above time. He exists outside of time. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He is. He is the, poss the possessor of eternity. That's what he is. You know, he has no beginning. And there is no end. The child was born, but he always existed. Because he always was. In the beginning, God. It didn't say God started at a point. He is beginning. There is nothing before him and there's nothing after him. He is the everlasting father. Imagine they're thinking about their fathers and they're thinking about their kings and their leaders. Their leaders came. See, leaders come and leaders go but God is the everlasting father he's always present amen he is the prince of peace that's who he is he is the prince of peace everybody's seeking peace everybody want peace he is the prince of peace there is no peace without him. He is the prince whose coming brings peace. Amen. In the past, his coming made peace with God. In the present, he makes peace coming to him. We find peace in God. In the future, my brothers and sisters, his second coming will usher in a kingdom of peace. 
And there is a longing for peace. There's a longing for satisfaction. There's a longing for fulfillment. There's a longing for wholeness and completeness. But I stop by to tell you, it is only accomplished through him. Jesus, he is the only one that can bring everlasting peace. He is the only one that can bring lasting peace. Have I got a witness? He is the only one that can hold you when you are hurting. Yes, so if you are wandering now in your walk, understand he is the wonderful counselor. He will lead you by his word. He will guide you through your wilderness. He will be with you as you go through your storms. He will deliver you from the paths of trials and troubles if you only follow him. And if you are weak, he is the mighty God. If you're apprehensive about your situation, he is the everlasting Father. Yeah, no worry about what tomorrow may hold. You love and serve the God that holds tomorrow. And you don't have to worry about the what of tomorrow or the if of tomorrow. You have the who of forever. Ain't God all right? If Jesus is your who, then the what will take care of itself. You've got to learn to trust him even when you can't trace him. And if you find yourself troubled in mind, he is the Prince of Peace. Have we got a witness? Man is in a turmoil. Yes, in himself. Have I got a witness this world uh, we're living in uh, is filled uh, with chaos and trouble? Um, have I got a witness there's wars uh, and rumors of wars uh, all over the world? Um, there's sickness and destruction, uh, hunger and pain uh, all over the world. Um, have I got a witness? Uh, yeah, man is seeking uh, to have, yes, completeness and wholeness uh, within himself. Uh, but I stop by to tell you, uh, even if you answered uh, world hunger, um, and even if you called uh, the wars to cease, uh, you will still have a war on the inside of yourself. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, I know I'm talking to somebody uh, sometime the battle uh, is not on the outside but it's on the inside ain't God alright I don't know about you but my biggest enemy my biggest trouble is not with anybody but myself every once in a while I look in the mirror and I say self what's wrong with you Am I the only one? I know you don't like to look in the mirror because it's easier to look out the window. But every once in a while, you need to look in the mirror and be honest with yourself. Well, you don't have to stay right there because I heard, I said I heard that Jesus, a child is born and a son is given and he shall he is and he will be he is the prince of peace what does that mean that now he's taken care of the war on the inside ain't god all right when 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 
Jesus died on the cross. He defeated sin, death, and the grave. Yes, he did. And when on that Thursday I bowed on my knees, he defeated sin. In me, and he alright, he reconciled me with himself. The war is over, I'm a walker in newness of life. And every once in a while, that death that I carry will rise up. But the power and the Spirit of God will subdue him every time. Have I got a witness? Somebody ought to realign that God, his word is powerful. Yes, it is. And he is the Prince of Peace that brings peace. He is the reconciler between God and man. He is the reconciler with man and himself. Sin inside of me was the Destroying me, sin leads me away from God. But Jesus, my heavenly Father, somebody know him as a deliverer. Will he deliver you from sin? Will he deliver you from Satan? Will he deliver you from self? You walk in peace and newness of life. He is. Do you know he is? Do you know he is? Anybody know he is? What is he? He is the Son of God. He's divine in his nature, unique in his relationship. He was God and he was with God at the same time. I can't explain it, but I believe it. And he alright. He is the anointed one, the Messiah, the promised Savior, and soon coming King. Do you know him? He is the Lord our Savior. He is full of authority and mastery. There is none like him. There is none beside him. He is our Savior. He came down to 42 generations. He came down from heaven to earth. Look at him. When he left heaven, he waved goodbye to his father made that journey put on the cloak of humanity yes he was the deity and he was wrapped up in humanity a child is born a son is given he is I said he is God with us Emmanuel he walks with us he talks with us he let us know that we belong to him. Do you know him? And he alright. He is the Son of Man. Speaks to his humanity. Look at him if you would. He was a baby in his mother's own. His mother looked at him. That it was he that looked at his mother. Before his mother looked at him, look at him, he was a baby that had to take milk. He grew up like you and me. He had to eat food and drink water, even though he's a bread of life and everlasting water. Do you know him? Have you tried him? Won't he make a way out of no way? I'm just about done. He is the Lamb of God, the sacrificial Lamb who's got the tongue for the sin of the Lord. He is the Word of God, the Word made flesh. I heard John say in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And everything that was made was made by him. There was not anything 
that was made not by him and the all right it goes down to say he came to his own and his own received him not but as many that received him to them give me power to become sons of God. Look at your neighbor and say, did you receive him? Are you a child of God? Yes, he is the Lamb of God. He is the Word made flesh. The Bible says he is Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. And everything in between, there's not a point that he's not. There's not a place that he won't be. Wherever you go, he'll be there. Won't he do it? He's always with you. Don't worry about your valleys. Don't worry about your lion's den. He's with you. I heard, I said I heard that he'll walk with you. In the valley, in the shadow of death, you don't have to fear him because he's with you. And not only that, but the Bible says, Lo, I'm with you all day, even to the end of the age. I'm through now that he's king of kings and lord of lords. This Christmas, I know you're gonna celebrate, but celebrate Jesus. I know you're gonna eat, drink, and be merry, but celebrate Jesus. If not for Jesus, we'd be lost and in our sins. If not for Jesus, I'd be an enemy with God. If not for Jesus, I'd be walking in darkness and not in right if not for Jesus I'd be hopeless and helpless but I thank God I thank him for the Prince of Peace do you know him I said do you know him have you tried him will he hold you when you get weak Won't he help you when you don't know what to do? Won't he guide you down the right path? Won't he put a smile where you had sadness? Won't he give you reason and motivation? Won't he help you navigate life? Won't he be there when you need him? Won't he be there when you call him? He's always there, even in darkness. When you don't see him, he is present because his word says so. Ain't he all right? Would you stand with us? <clears throat> Door of the church is open. So many.